So we'll come to our session in quantitative methods where we're going to learn descriptive statistics. Now we will need to firstly understand some statistical language in the basic manner possible. To start with, what is quantitative and qualitative data? When we're dealing with quantitative data, we're dealing with data that has values or counts, data that is expressed in numbers. Quantitative data is more numeric. It's more about the hows, the how many, the how much, the how often. When you hear a question like that, just know that is what? Quantitative data. And we're dealing with qualitative data. We're dealing with measures of the types represented by names, symbols, or even a code. It can be a number code, but that is qualitative. So qualitative data is mainly about categorical values. What type are we dealing with? And whereas quantitative data, we're dealing with the quantity. So qualitative is for quality. Quantitative is for quantity. So data that can be numeric will always have a quantitative element. So data is collected about an individual or data that is collected about a categorical value. This is called qualitative data. So you need to identify what kind of data this could be. For instance, if we're looking at a data unit where a person is concerned, how many children you have? Four, that is what? Quantitative data. How much do you earn? 60 quarter. That is quantitative. How many hours do you work? 38. If you're dealing with a house, how many square meters is this? A business, how many workers do you have? A farm, how much you need to produce? All this is quantitative. But the same can be said about a person in a categorical term. For instance, in which country were you born? Australia, that is qualitative. What is your occupation? I'm a photographer, I'm a lecturer. Do you work full-time or part-time? That is qualitative. It comes in words to say FT or PT. Are you on full-time or part-time as a student? A house, we've talked about the square meters it is on the quantitative aspect. But also on the qualitative, in which city is your house located? That is a qualitative aspect of it. A business, what industry are you in? It's retail or wholesale, that is qualitative. A farm, what is the main activity at the farm? Dairy, so that is qualitative. So you need to understand that kind of data. Now, I'll take you to pictograms. There are pictograms that you need to understand. So we have pictograms like this. This is called a histogram. These bars are scattered like this. And we have this pictogram, which is called a bar chart. It has what? Information, these bars are separated. So you need to understand the pictograms and what they're all about. You need to have an idea of how these pictograms look like. And we also have a pie chart, which looks like this. We also have a cumulative frequency graph, which is absolutely. We always also have a relative frequency, which is what? Seasonal, it's haphazard. So this is a pie chart. This is a cumulative frequency graph. This is a relative frequency polygon. What polygon is this? E. What is D? Mm. 
The background. The background. And what is the? A histogram. A histogram. Okay. So these are important polygons. Now let's get back to our qualitative and quantitative information. So if you were to be asked the weight of a baby, what type of data is it? In cages, this is quantitative because you can weigh. And because it is in decimal, it is quantitative continuous interval. For each of the year, the difference between the maximum and the minimum value, that is quantitative. But it is what continuous because you can have 13.3 degrees. It is quantitative continuous interval. For each member of the Zambia national team, the total number of appearances at Africa Cup, that is quantitative discrete. Discrete is a definite countable number. One, two, three, you don't have any recurring decimals. Okay, so you should be able to identify what kind of data we're dealing with. So we're going to ask questions now. The number of customers arriving at the supermarket during the morning, what type of information is this? In that order, Esther, Gloria, Kafula, and Kalonji. It gives me precisely, it's quantitative, what? Quantitative. Continuous. Quantitative, continuous or discrete? Discrete. Continuous. Discrete. Discrete, yes, discrete. countable. Continuous mm -hmm. decimals. Then the number of mobile money booths in a Lusaka street corner. What kind of information is that? It's quantitative. quantitative. Discrete. Discrete. Discrete, yeah. The price of copper in London on a Monday morning. What? Information is that? Quantitative. Quantitative and continuous. The number of seats that will be sold for a performance of a play in a theater with a capacity of 328. Quantitative discrete. Quantitative discrete. The length of time you have to wait at an autobahn. Quantitative continuous. What? Quantitative continuous. The last digit of a randomly selected number. Telephone number. Quantitative discrete. Are you sure? Your NRC number. Qualitative? Yes. I know. Why? Why is an NRC number qualitative? It's not all numbers that should give you. Remember on the definition I said sometimes it can be by a code. It can be qualitative, but you are categorized by a code. By saying oh, okay. Oh, okay. Tonga or Bemba. That is qualitative. Your NRC is this. It doesn't quantify, you can't measure one's NRC. All right. So I need you to. I have a question. Uh -huh. But for the NRC number, like the last digits, the only possibilities are that it, the number will be from zero to nine. So why isn't it? I don't, um, I don't think this one is clear. The last digit of a selected telephone number, is this quantitative or qualitative? But the fact that they've mentioned digit, isn't that quantitative? They're not saying the last NRC number. I don't know, not sure. Okay. So you find out and get back to me on that. Now let's proceed into something more um, defined. 
So we want to look at how to calculate data. We're given a number like one, three, four, Six, six. Then we have eight and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are already arranged. Whenever you're given data that is not arranged, you arrange it from the smallest to the highest number. Then you can square it. One times one, one. Here we have a nine. Here we have a 16. Here we have a 36. Another 36. 54. And 81. Then your total up. What's the total of this column and what's the total of this column? It will be called summation of x, and this will be summation of x squared. So quickly assist me with the totals. Summation of x is 37. 37. x squared. Two forty-three, I think. Three. So I'll start with the measures of central tendency and some of this version. So the mean is noted by the data what? 243, the mean is denoted by the letter x bar. So it's given by summation of x over n. So our summation of x is 37 divided by seven. What do we get? What are we getting as our mean? 5.28. So the mean you divided um, the sum total of x, so you get 5.28. 2.8. Two Do you round off? Because there's a 5. So is it 5.29? There's a 5. five. There. Probably leave it three decimal places. Okay. It's three decimal places, it's 0. 0.6, 5.286. Yeah. Then the variance is given by summation of x squared minus summation of x, the power two over n, everything over n minus one. So 243 minus 37 squared over seven, everything divided by seven minus one. So what do we get? So we start from this area here. We square the thirty seven, then divide it by, you divide it by seven. Then you subtract it from 
243. So what is that seven squared divided by seven? It's um actually no, we just calculated direct. It's one and five point five seven. Yes, man. Two forty-three. It's giving you forty-seven point four two nine. Forty-seven point four two nine. Divided by six. Six. Did you give me what? Seven point nine zero four. Okay, 7.904. So this is called the variance. If it's a sample, we call it sample variance, we use S squared. If it's a population, we use sigma squared. So when you square root the variance, it's called the standard deviation. So there's a square root on a calculator there, which looks like this. So when you square root this one, it will give you what is called the standard deviation. So what is the standard deviation of 7.904? 2.811. You get 2.811. So 2.811, if you divide it by the mean, you get the percentage of the variation from the mean. It's called the coefficient of variation, CV. So divide this by the mean. What are we getting? Fifty one point fifty three point two zero percent. So quickly, what did we do? We summed up this to get it seven. We summed up this one forty eight. You found forty eight. We have also found forty eight. Mm -hmm. Eight percent. Yeah, found fifty-three point one seven. How? Fifty-three point one nine. Yeah. One nine. Yeah. Isn't it two point? Yeah, two point eight one one divided by. It's five point five, not five point eight five. It's five point. Two eight six. Mm. Eight, five, eight, six. Okay, so mm -hmm. two point eight one one divided by five point two eight six, which we get fifty three point one eight. Yeah. One eight yes. So you're all within the same range. So. How do you find the mean summation of x over n? Uh, excuse me, sorry. Yes, I'm sorry for taking back. So let me take go through. We are just given values of x: one, three, four, six, six, eight, nine. So we square this: one times one, one; three times three, nine; four times four, sixteen; six times six, thirty-six; and two nine times nine, eighty-one. The sample size n is when we add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven. That is where we're starting from. Then we'll be asked to find the mean. The mean is the average. The average is simply the total of the x values we divide by the n. That's seven divided by seven, which is 5.286. So this is how the mean is computed. Get your mark for that. Then when we go to the variance, summation of x squared minus summation of x over n, everything over n minus one. So here we have 243 minus 37 squared over seven. So this one is giving us 195. We subtract it from 243, we get 47.429. Then seven minus one is six. 
when we divide that, we get our variance, which is 7.904. When we square root it, we get our standard deviation, which is 2.811. So this standard deviation is what we divide the mean into to get what is called the coefficient of variation. 2.811 over 5.286 times 100, we get 53.18%. So this is how we find these calculations. Any questions before I proceed? Please explain to me the, the different denotations, sigma and that um, standard S, the S. So what does this stand for? You said what? For population and another one is for ex this kind of explain more for the sample mean okay and this one is called the population mean this one is called the sample standard deviation and this one sigma is called the population standard deviation the variance, for example, is S squared. A population, sigma squared. So these sometimes are used interchangeably, but the actual thing is we are dealing with a sample, one, two, three, four, the mean is called the X bar, it's the sample mean. You use S standard deviation and S squared, which is the variance. But if you're using a population of more than 100, these are the population mean, population standard deviation, and population variance. So now we go to the other measures. It's what is called the range. The range is the difference between the highest number minus the minimum number. So in this case, our highest number was nine, and the smallest number was one. For the mean, so we have one, three, four, six. One, three, four, six, six. Then uh, eight, nine, eight, nine. So the highest number is nine. And the smallest number is what? One. So our range becomes eight. Then we go to what is called Q1. It's called the lower quartile. The lower quartile, it is a quarter of n plus one. Our n in this case is what? Seven. Seven plus one is eight. A quarter of eight is the second number. So the second number in this case, since I read in order, our second number is three. And there's what is called Q2, which is the median. Median means middle. Middle means half. Half of what? Half of n plus one. Our n was what? Our n was seven. Half of seven plus one is half of eight, which is the fourth number. The fourth number, when you check there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five. Okay. So the second, so the second was our Q what? Q1. So the fourth one is our Q2, which is giving us what? Six actual value. Actual number is six. Then we have what is called Q3. Q3 is the upper quartile. Upper quartile in this case will be what? 
three quarters of n plus one. So three quarters of n plus one. N plus one is eight. Three quarters of eight is the sixth number. And the sixth number there is what? Eight. And we have what we call the interquartile range, IQR. Interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile, which is Q3, and the lower quartile, which is Q1. So the Q3 is eight, and Q1 is three. When you subtract them, we get a five. Question. Gloria, Esnat, Kafula. How do we find the Q1? What is the Q1 code? It's called the first quarter or the lower quarter. How do we find the first quarter? Please repeat the question, my internet. Okay, how do you find the first quarter or Q1? Esnat and Winga, how do you find the Q1? Gloria and Kafula, how do you find Q2? Kalonje, how do you find the Q3? Um, N plus one. A quarter, N plus one. Can you get me? It's a quarter of n plus one, and that was our n. Our n was was eight. It's seven. Our n was seven. Because there's seven digits here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how did we get the eight in that case? Seven plus one, since it's n plus one. Okay. Thereafter, what did we do? A quarter of eight is, is two. So what do we do? What do we do with the two? We look for the, the number that's second. We count position. Mm -hmm. This is one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. So we look at position number two. It's called our Q1. Okay. Next, Q2. What is Q2 called? The second quarter or the median? How do you find the median? A half of n plus one. And our n in this case was seven plus one, eight. Half of eight is four. Then what do we do? We look for the sixth number. For the fourth number. Look for the fourth number, which is six. Which is six. Okay, then the third quarter is also called what? Upper quartile. Upper quartile. Okay, so what do we do? How do we find it? Three quarters of n plus one. So three quarters of n plus one. And uh, three quarters of six, then what do we do? You look for the number on the sixth position. Yes, which is what? Eight. Eight. The difference between the third quarter and the first quarter, what is it called? The Great. It's called the IQR in the quarter range. So here we subtracted what? Eight minus three to get five. Then half of the interquartile range, what is it called? Median. Half of the interquartile range is called what? The median. Those that were there for the semi-quartile deviation. 
So half of five is 2.5. then you'll be asked to draw the box whisker diagram. But before we go to draw the box whisker diagram, they'll also ask you to find the mode. Mode is the most appearing number. Which number is appearing the most there? Six. Six. Which number is appearing the most? Six. 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 Six is our mode. All right. So we have zero. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Zero there if you want. So we want to plot the box whisker diagram has three important things. Five important things. Number one, what is important on the box whisker diagram? Two, three, four, five. Number one, what is important on the box whisker? Those who were here in my first class, please don't embarrass me. <laughs> the median, the, the, the outliers, the range, the highest and the lowest. You're really guessing. None of those ones is part of the summary. Um. <laughs> uh huh. What are the five things that are important? The X mean. The X max. Q1, Q2, and the Q3. What does our X mean? One. one. And then X max? Nine. Nine. Q1? Three. The three. Q2? Six. Six. And the Q3? Eight. Eight. So our one and our nine is our minimum and maximum values. Then our Q1 is at three. And our Q2 is at six. And our Q3 is at eight. So you draw the box whisker plot like that. If this dot is closer to this side, it is skewed to the right. If this dot is closer to this wall, it is skewed to the left. It's called the coefficient of skewness. So sorry, I didn't get that point. I'm sorry. I didn't get how you you got the six and how you we we calculated all this here. These are the figures we had. Q1 was what? Three, which is the upper quarter. And the lower quarter was a Q2. It was a three. Okay, then the Q2 is six and the Q3 is eight. So this is where the figures are coming from. So is these on this timeline. So this was our Q1, this was our Q2, and this was our Q3. So we want to identify outliers. On the lower quarter, we're going to subtract 1.5 
IQR from what? Um, um, we're going to subtract the Q1 from 1.5 IQR. So our IQR was the difference between the upper quarter and the lower quarter. So eight minus three was five. So when you multiply this one times 1.5, 1.5 is part of the formula. You get the correction term, which is 7.5. In short, this 7.5, you add it to the highest quartile here, and you subtract it from the lowest quartile here. Any numbers that will lie outside that are called outliers. So Q3, we're going to add 1.5. IQR. We've already calculated that in the data range is what? 5. 5 times 1.5 is 7.5. So here we're going to subtract 3 minus 7.5, which will be negative 4.5. And here we're going to sub add 8 plus 7.5, which will give you 15.5. So 15.5 is somewhere here. Negative 4.5 is somewhere this side. So all the numbers are within negative 4.5 and 15.5. So in this case, we have no outliers. But if in the numbers were given, there was a number like 20 or 16, any numbers above that, or a number like negative what, negative 10, which is beyond this, would have said those are outliers. So this is how we identify the outliers. This is how we identify the outliers. So your homework before my evening class, I'll need you to answer this question number two of your assignment. We have two groups, method one and method two will be asked to calculate the extreme values of each group, draw the box whisker diagram for the two groups, and comment in each of these two groups. All right? So are there any questions? Find our to find our coefficient of skewness, you can either identify to which of these walls our mean is close to. So. We have three as part of the formula mean minus median over standard deviation. We calculated our mean as what? Initially, we calculated our mean as 5.286 and our mean standard deviation 2.811 and our standard deviation and our mean median as six. So 5.28 and that's what? 6 over 1. Our standard deviation is 2.8. Um, okay. When we get a negative, it will mean that we're negative, it is skewed to the left, it's negatively skewed. So already whenever the mean is smaller than the median, you say it is skewed to the left. Whenever the mean is positive, it's skewed to the right. So here we can say it is negative what skewed because the answer we're going to get is zero point, negative zero point something. It's negatively skewed. Then after identifying these three spots, although it looks closer to this, it's, it's deceiving, but the surface is you get the formula here. If you get a positive skew to the right, a negative skew to the left. Okay. Then. I have a question. Uh -huh. the, the formula for coefficient of skewness is the summation of X minus median, of mean minus median. That's summation or it's, so it's three. three. It's three. 3x bar minus median over standard deviation. Okay, so if we calculate, if we multiply a, mod, a positive, and then, oh, never mind. Just know that whenever the median 
is more than whenever the mean is more than the median you get a negative if the mean is less than the median it will be negative if it's more than the median it's a positive so in this case we're able to tell that this is less so it will be negative to be skewed to the left now skewness simply measures the degree of bias if you get a negative it will mean that most of the people are on the negative side for instance if qm most of you fail the skewness means you're bending to the left. If most of you pass, you're skewed to the right, it's positively skewed. That is what skewness means. So you always need to comment to say it's skewed to the left or skewed to the right. Okay. So. Okay. That is um, my comment so that you understand. We haven't finished. So I was just answering. Okay, and, thank you. Uh, so now when we go here, after drawing this uh, scale, we identify our IQ error. Our IQ error was eight minus three, which is equal to what? Five. Then you multiply this five times one point five. It's part of the formula. You get seven point five. So this 7.5, let's add it to the bigger number here, the eight, the highest quartile, not the highest number nine, uh, the Q3. To add it to the Q3, it will take you to what? 15.5. Then you also subtract it from the lowest Q, is three. So subtract 7.5, you get uh, negative 4.5. So these ones will give you brackets within which you're able to identify who they are about liars. If our sample numbers are lying outside this extension, we call them outliers. So in this case, all of them, nine and one, are within the range. So this tells us that we have no outliers. Is that clear? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. 